There are five main questions you have to ask yourself before even starting to look at the components of a chest x-ray. Whose film am I looking at? Are the patient's details correct? What film am I looking at? What view is it in? Where was this taken? Was it done in the emergency department, the x-ray department, ICU, etc? When was it taken? Was it taken today, yesterday, last year, last month? And why was it taken? Why was it requested? Next, you should look at the aspects that affect the quality of any given chest x-ray. The rotation are the medial ends of the clavicles, equidistant from the spinous processes. Inspiration, is it adequately inspired? Are 10 to 11 posterior ribs seen in each lung field? And how is it exposed? Is it too bright, too dark? And can you see everything that you need to see? And then you're going to adopt an A, B, C, D, E approach to interpreting chest x-rays. A obviously stands for airways. So we're talking about the trachea and its branches. You're talking about the bronchi and any airways that you can see distal to that. So you're going to trace it. You're going to look down either side. You're going to look in both lung fields as well. Moving on to B, you're going to trace the lung fields. Look at the pleural spaces as well. You're going to have a look and see if the lung markings go all the way to the lateral or the side aspect of the rib cage. And you're going to make sure there's no collections in the distal portions. You're going to make sure there's no collapse of any segments of the lungs. We'll talk about segments later on in this video. But you're going to make sure there's nothing obvious in any of the lung fields that doesn't look the same as the other side. Of course the patient can have bilateral pathology, but it's good to compare each side and contrast. For C, you're going to be looking at circulation or the cardiomediastinum. You're going to try to trace the outline of the heart. You're going to look at the right side first, tracing round, tracing around the apex and then the aortic knuckle at the end. You're looking for an enlarged heart or you're looking for a wide mediastinum. And we'll talk about some reference points for sizes of particular bits of the anatomy in a minute. Staying true to our ABCD mnemonic, we're going to look at disability next, which incorporates bones. You're going to try to trace the bones of the clavicles. You're going to look at the spinous processes that you can see in the midline. And then we're going to work on the ribs. You're going to start at the top and work your way down. You're going to start at the posterior aspect of the ribs, which is shown now. And you're going to work your way forward with each of them, looking for fractures in all of these bones or any displacement. Any fracture or displacement could imply damage to underlying structures. Lastly, E stands for exposure and everything else. So we're going to look at the skin. We're going to look at if there's any subcutaneous emphysema, which is air in the skin. We're going to look for any fragments that are in the skin. We're going to look for artifacts, such as ECG leads, oxygen tubing, that could confuse your picture. You should also take this opportunity to look for any tubes that might have been inserted into the patient, such as an endotracheal tube, a nasogastric tube, or any central venous access. Now that we've had a quick run around of the x-ray, we're going to start comparing sizes of different anatomical structures. So in the diaphragm, the right diaphragm should be higher than the left, but no more than 3 centimetres. In terms of the heart, the cardiothoracic ratio should be less than 55%, and what that means is that the heart should fill up no more than 55% of the thoracic cavity. The trachea should be less than 25 millimetres across in a man and less than 21 millimetres in a woman. And if you're looking at chest x-rays, you're obviously going to be looking at the lung fields in your B part of your survey. So we're going to look at the different zones that you should be looking in. There are two lobes on the left and three lobes in the right. We're going to divide them out now. So on the right starting, we've got the right upper lobe, the right middle lobe and the right lower lobe. And on the left, we have the left upper lobe and the left lower lobe. You can see on the right that the lobes aren't exactly a third of what you can see in the screen and this is really important when you're trying to identify structural abnormalities or pathology. For example, where you might think is the right lower lobe is actually probably the right middle lobe and the right lower lobe is much more lateral. This is because for most parts the right lower lobe is posterior to the middle lobe. The same can be said for the left lower lobe and the left upper lobe. I'm going to draw some other structures now. You can see the apex of the heart. You can see the aortic knuckle, which is the arch of the aorta as it comes off the heart. You can see the clavicles at the top there. And you can kind of see the carina, which is the bifurcation of the trachea into your right and left main bronchus. Something that sometimes catches people out is the gastric bubble, which actually is air in the stomach, and that's under the left diaphragm. We're going to be doing more videos on the certain pathologies you can see on chest x-rays because whenever you're looking at the lung fields you should consider whether there are certain things within them. You should consider is there any consolidation in any of the lobes that we've talked about. You should consider are there any collapse of those lobes. You should consider is there any pneumothorax or is there air in the pleural cavity surrounding the lungs until the lung fields not quite go to the end. 
is there a tension pneumothorax? So is the trachea shifted uh, to the right or to the left? Is there any pleural effusion, which is a collection of fluid in the pleura which compresses in the lungs? Or is there any pulmonary edema within the actual interstitium of the lung itself? As I've already said, we're going to do more videos on chest x-ray interpretation, in particular the pathologies one might find in patients in critical care or emergency medicine. But for now, there are resources and infograms on the website propathology.com that you can access and refine your skills at basic chest x-ray interpretation. Subscribe to the Propathology YouTube channel, then you'll get updates on whenever these videos are going to come out.